but you're not gonna believe what this person at the post office did with one of my packages. Welcome back to the cabin. Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. You know, I don't know if you remember this, but if you've been around the channel for a while, I had a series of videos about my local post office last year, which I had absolutely loved forever. And then things turned a little bit sour a little bit for a little while, and I haven't had any trouble since, but I had a little, I don't know, event happened at the post office the other day I think is interesting to share and I think it's kind of a good lesson for the newbies out there you know all you old time resellers you already know this but there's a tip that I want to give the new folks out there plus some really awesome sales but you're not going to believe what this person at the post office did with one of my packages let's take a look first one is going to Sandra who I think is a repeat buyer well I know is a repeat buyer which means normally means that they are a viewer. This is a, I don't know what kind of bird that is, but salt and pepper shaker in a bird bath. And I got this, I think I got this one in Gastonia last year on the way home from the Prison of Profit convention, which I'm headed to later this week. So actually when you hear this, it'll be, hmm, is it, what day is it? Wednesday when you hear this? So I'll be headed out, um, that is on Sunday. Anyway, that, see that little chip right there? So that would have gone for a little bit more, but because of that chip, we took a little off $11 plus shipping to Sandra. We appreciate the purchase. Hope you enjoy it. Hi, Joe. We are going to do three more sales, and then we're going to talk about the way that this particular postal employee treated one of my packages, which might have affected other people's packages as well. And I was kind of taken back by it a little bit. But before we do that, check out this sale. This one had already sold before. Normally the clothes are inside, but... This one was back there hiding because I had pulled it out because it had sold, but then the buyer canceled it right before we were going to ship it. So send him a refund. This is Tim Burton's. I don't want to stretch the shirt out. Nightmare Before Christmas size large. Maybe I should have kept that. Could have wore that for Halloween. <laughs> that one right there sold for $17 plus shipping. Blue Ridge Mama bought it for $3.99 at Goodwill. Next one up here is Dino. And this one, that's not Dino. This is Dino. I think this one came from Lady Arbitrage. So Dawn gave us that one when Carrie American Arbitrage was here. I'm pretty sure. Dawn, if you're listening, did that come from you? I also hear rumors that you're going to have a YouTube channel soon. I hope that's true. I'd love to see you pick some, some thrift stores out there in Vegas. So that one right there sold for $11 plus shipping. It is a Nanco. And it's the kind that's not super soft, you know. Um, sometimes these, when you get these that are like this, that have that, I don't know what kind of feel that is, y'all. Maybe y'all can tell me styrofoam. Who knows? Those, a lot of time, will come from, like, fairs and stuff like that. You know, giveaways for winning the ring toss or something like that. $11 plus shipping. And I've been waiting to find a place to put Swift Heart, one of the Care Bear cousins. And I think that might be a good place for it, 1984. So... And I like to keep them full up there. I have so much stuff, which is why we need that other shed. As soon as we have that other shed ready, all this, all four of these tubs are out of here because this is unlisted merchandise. And we'll be able to fill in with some more tubs because our plush is overflowing, our hats are overflowing, our shoes are overflowing. We're going to start running a few auctions to clear it out, I think. Speaking of American Arbitrage, the next item I got at a sale when I was with him down there at FlipCon and Dave and Eric and Bunch of folks down there picking with us. Even Richard from, I can't ever pronounce the name of his channel, so I'll just put it up. He was with us, and we were there late at a church sale, and all the good stuff was coming out of there, and I was determined to grab something good. And I bought this Chef's Choice knife sharpener for five bucks. And these can go anywhere between, you know, $30 and $150, depending on the model and condition if it's new or not and this turned out to be a really good one sold for $100 on Bonanza $100 plus shipping and I just looked on there and I have another Bonanza sale I'll tell you about in just a minute people ask me about Bonanza if you've been watching the show for a while you know I don't make a ton of sales but lately this is my let's see what is it October now I sold three things in September off of there and I've already sold two 
in uh, October and it's no extra work at all. It's bonanza.com. I didn't get paid to say that, just FYI. To be honest with you, there's not a whole lot of sales to be had over there, but it is all automated and simple. So I figured what the heck, I'll sell an extra few things every month. And that's a good one right there. Look, I have a story to tell you about the post office and I'm not being critical. Every time I talk about the post office, a lot of people come in just trashing the post office. A lot of people come in, you know, trashing FedEx or UPS. And then I have a lot of folks who actually work for the post office who trash the post office. And then a lot of people who work for the post office who are defending the employees. This is not an attack on any of the employees. I've, I've gone through this many, many times. And actually, the, the young lady who did this is my absolute favorite person at that post office. She is so kind. She's awesome, and I just think she's terrific. But I gotta tell you this story. You may remember on the, I think it was the last video, I had a box of books back there that I listed. I got with the Bearded Thrift Machine, Julian down there in South Carolina, and I brought them over here, stacked them all up, and there was 10 books, and they're super heavy. This package weighed like over 20, it was probably 25 pounds. I could go look, but I'm gonna guess 24 pounds. And I packaged that thing up, and it was pretty heavy. Well, we had also had quite a few other sales that day. I think maybe, I don't know, 11, 12 more sales that day that were headed out of here. And Reagan was in here packaging up tons of stuff from CommonwealthPicker.com. And Bubba's girlfriend was in here as well, helping her. And there was a ton of sales last week on CommonwealthPicker.com. And usually those all head out on like a Tuesday and they do them all together, but there were so many they had to do multiples. Anyway, long story short, they were packing up stuff. Let me show you. You know, we have all kinds of stuff. We've got the tumblers now, we got fanny packs, and we got the old bags, and there's just that's all there is left of those, by the way. Um, but we got coffee mugs as well, all kinds of stuff, stickers and whatever. But when you package up the coffee mugs, they're fairly fragile. These aren't very fragile, but we only put, you know, we wrap them in bubble wrap and we put them in a padded mailer because they're not going to get hurt. But, you know, you still, you don't want anything denting them. And then as we normally do, you know, we'll package up something like this right here and you could package something like that in like a four by four by four box but to me it's taking a little bit of a chance doing that because there's just not enough room to put enough padding in there so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll package it up in one of these and then put it in one of these just in case or this is the cheapest way to do it and it's just as effective put plenty of packaging paper and bubble wrap and stuff like that around something like this and then here there's enough room that you can protect it see but you're wrapping them separately and so it just depends but we we ship out a lot of semi-fragile stuff obviously from time to time and we want it to be somewhat protected so i say all that just to say that i went to the post office that day and i had three bags of stuff all pretty light stuff but some fragile and i dropped all that stuff off and i also dropped off that 25 pound box of books that was pretty heavy and I asked her, I'm like, hey, you know, where would you like me to put this? You know, sometimes people, they don't might not have a good back or something. And I didn't want her to have to pick it up. And she's like, oh, I'll just put it up here on the on the counter. I'm like, are you sure? You know, whatever. It's like, yeah, I'll just go get one of those carts. And so she went and got a cart. So everything got thrown into that cart. You know, they just went like they typically would, you know, scan everything in and, and put them all in their, their big cart. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And she still hadn't done that box of books. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Well, I have a P.O. box, so I went to the P.O. box, which reminds me, I've got a few people been sending me some gifts and, and some cards and stuff, and I want to say thank you to, to those people maybe a little bit later. But if you sent me something big to put in that new shed out there, the new supply hut out there, we will uh, probably say thank you in a week or so for those gifts and talk about where they're going to go in there. So very, very kind of some of y'all to send some stuff for some new decorations. I appreciate that. So as I'm going to my post office box, my parents have one there as well, so I'll go in there and check it for them. And I realized in one of my bags, I still had something left. It was a little envelope. One of these right here where we had a few stickers that were going in there. If we have, you know, multiples, sometimes it's too big to stick in an envelope, put a stamp on. We don't sell those on eBay, so we'll put a stamp on those. And so we put them in one of these. So sometimes I'll miss something like this and I saw it. So I walked it back in there and I see her with this box of books in her hands and she's walking towards that cart and she literally flips it up like this into the cart and boom, I'm like, oh my goodness. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm not being overly critical here. I mean, it was a big box of books and she wasn't particularly large at all and she had to pick it up over this cart 
it was going to be difficult. That's why I asked her if she needed help or whatever. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And she turned around and came and she saw me and I'm like, oh, I hope everything's okay in there. You know, I didn't really know what to say. I, you know, what was I going to do? It was done deal at that point. And like I said, she's super sweet. But that's just a lesson, I think, for new resellers. You have to assume that your packages are going to be treated very poorly. And I don't, I mean, I doubt she makes a practice of that kind of thing. I think she's, she's awesome. But, you know, the books were going to be fine. They're books, for goodness sake. I was more worried about the coffee mugs and the few little fragile things we had there. And more than likely, they're okay because we package things pretty well. You know, Bubba's girlfriend's been learning how to package a little bit herself. And uh, on days that I'm headed out of town and I can't get it all done, I'll, I'll do the video and she'll come in here and do a little bit of shipping herself. So, uh, and Blue Ridge Mama, of course, is an amazing packer. You know, she, she helps me out a bunch in here and she's really, really good at it. Probably more careful than I am. But I think it's really important. I get a lot of messages from people. I sold my first thing and, you know, they want to return because it's broken. Well, it might be a scam because you're a first time seller, but it also might be real because a lot of times first time resellers, they don't really, they don't really understand how your packages can be treated, not just by the post office or UPS or FedEx. You know, people are in a hurry and in the holiday season, especially right around Christmas time, everybody's hustling and their priority isn't to pick things up and set them down softly. Sometimes they're going to throw stuff around. So just assume that, you know, you need to be able to package it good enough that it's going to be able to handle a jolt. As I'm headed back to grab the next item, I just wanted to say a couple things. Brian is was the winner of that scale, and we are going to ship that off to you, Brian, ASAP. And I just wanted to tell people out there that I'm never going to tell you you're a winner in the comment section. I'll always do it on the video. There's been a lot of scammers out there using my image, um, not necessarily my name. Sometimes you got to make sure that the image of the comment is going to reflect the name as well. Just don't ever give anybody your, your personal information. If you're doing it for me, it's going to be done on email. Cassandra Shoopy won the part-time picker's hat. And so we'll talk about that in a second. Let's see, I think the vinyl masons are down here. Speaking of not treating things well, this is probably not the best idea. It might fall. Actually, I don't think it will. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> we'll grab a vinyl mason that's headed out of here. But Cassandra, if you would go to Commonwealth Picker at gmail.com and give me your information and i will ship out this part-time picker hat to you thank you to matt we really appreciate that matt we're gonna and thank you to uh brian as well for getting those off of matt for a charity on his end we're gonna do an auction for the other one on a charity on our end so anyway let me find the right vinyl made and that is cassandra s-h-u-p-e is that shoop or shoopy I used to have a professor in college named Shoopy, and I taught his grandson when I was a teacher in high school. He was also my shortstop. At any rate, this one right here, the Fairy Godmother, is headed out of here, and it's headed out of here for $8 plus shipping. And this one is going to a viewer. It's going to Kim. Thanks for the entertaining content and knowledge. This is my first purchase from you, but I needed some bubble bucks and plans for your working box storage bench. That's awesome. That is really cool. So thank you, Kim, for buying plans for the Commonwealth Picker shipping table over on CommonwealthPicker.com. My shed comes in by August 8th. Really, congratulations. The time is here. So thank you, Kim, and I hope you enjoy that shipping table, and I hope you enjoy the Fairy Godmother Vinyl Mission. All right, the next one's going off to Kenneth. Kenneth bought, I think, multiples of these. I think maybe last week, Z28 Camaro, last one to go in here. And that one, at least in that drawer, does it say how many are left? 50 available, so we've got more back here. So I'll have to fill that up. Z28, $15.95 free shipping from the two epic garage sale video. That was just, well, it's exactly what it says. It was an epic garage sale. We made so much money on these vintage keychains. He says this is going to somebody who's going to rebuild a 97 Z28. So, Kenneth, thank you so much for the support. Hope you enjoy it. Just got the last bag out of the Z28, so we'll uh, fill this one up in here and be ready to sell some more. Just think about that. When you ever get something like this, I mean, just if you think you can make money on selling one and there's none listed and you got a ton of them, I just went back and offered them a bunch of money for all of them and we've been making bank ever since. 
pretty pretty darn cool all that's pure profit it's, you know sell for 16 bucks you know we'd ship that in one of these things by the way right here love these there's a link below i don't think supply hut carries these if you don't charlie you should because they're really cool but uh love selling multi-quantities we've sold so many i think these are now gone you'll see in the next video because two sales just come across today so absolutely love those sales multi-quantities are absolute king love it walked us down at a sale i think near uncle mark's garage sale and paid a dollar sold very quickly for 11 no 12 dollars plus shipping for that the basics of biblical greek people still like to have that hard copy book boy it's a lot easier to study from i guess so two more of these herb drying racks <laughs> came across somebody who was clearly a a grower a distributor or something going out of business and they're selling everything dirt cheap and these were a buck a piece which you know a dollar into 15 for something like this is worth it but when they had six of them you know it's definitely worth it you know make 70 dollars profit on those and they're selling super fast i think there's only two left we have been auctioning off these for a 50 50 split split with charity and we have been putting one of these guys cwp enema in over there we've been putting them inside and shipping them off so that one went to terry along with all that stuff so thank you we appreciate it and this money i think i always forget i, I can't remember if we're giving to one of the cat charities for this one or if we're doing isaiah 117 but either way you can look down there i think we're gonna auction one more off and then keep the rest uh oh somebody's here what's car up battery. Um, car battery's dead I'm guessing it because the car won't start. Okay, I'll come fix it. All right, Turner's here with a homeschool hustler sale. Whenever I go to garage sales, I'll pick up, sometimes I'll pick up a box full of toys, Turner. And uh, just give them to your mama because it's too much of a pain for me. I can't take it. <laughs> she likes digging through the toys and she found some good ones. This one was good enough to list. Do you know who that is? Um, Goofy. <laughs> no, it's Pluto. Pluto. Close, close. Wrong Disney dog, huh? One dog is an actual dog, and then Goofy is a dog that looks like and talks like a human. <laughs> this dog is a dog dog. <laughs> and it's got a fire hat on and a fire hydrant. And that sold for, what did it sell for? $8 plus shipping for that little guy right there. That's definitely <laughs> enough for you to do what? Save a dollar, spend a dollar, donate a dollar. Bye. Video game lot headed out of here today, going to Video Game Collector 1, also known as Chucky. So thank you for your purchase. You bought from us from before. I really do appreciate that. So PlayStation 2, Mortal Kombat, Wii, Star Wars 3, and I don't know what that is. Elder Scrolls, I guess, yeah. PlayStation 3 and a Game Boy Game Driver, Game Boy Color. And all those are headed out for $47. But one of them came from the Motherload sale. That brings us to $3,068 so far on that sale. Had another Bonanza sale, and this one came out of the Once in a Lifetime sale, if you remember that. We had tons of posters, and I haven't got to... I haven't even literally looked at most of them. Haven't even gone through them. Just have so much I need to do this winter. But we did get through about seven or eight of them and listed them. This is one of them. It's a Keystone Light pinup girl. You know, 80s style right there. And that one sold for $15 plus shipping, and it sold on Bonanza of all places. What the heck? Hey, I almost forgot I sold this cheese grater. I've had people like, why do you pick these cheese graters up? First of all, these old ones, they sell in my booth for some reason. And people like to display them in their kitchen. I don't know, clean them, use them. Who the heck knows? I remember peeling the skin off of my fingers with these things, trying to grate cheese when I was a kid. I'm like, good night any rate, that sold for $10, if you can believe it, plus shipping. So, not a bad little sale right there. Hi guys, my name is Reagan, and I'm going to be saying what sold out of the CW Pizza Store today. Hopefully I can remember, because I didn't bring my clipboard down here. But, I'm pretty sure Bill bought a gray CWP shirt. David bought the CWP Tumblr, and he's from the Netherlands, and then... Kelly bought both of the tumblers, and speaking of the tumblers, um, if you don't know already, we have two of them. The first one's white, and it has all of our logos on it, and then the second one is, whoa, the second one is black, and it's trash cash. I don't know who would buy that one, though. Just kidding. I actually really like that one, and then let's see if I can remember the joke, too. 
So today's Commonwealth Comedy is What did the duck say when she bought chapstick? Put it on the bill. There we go. I remembered it. And it's funny because I just bought chapstick too. And also, I want y'all to comment down below if you like me doing videos by myself better or when my dad films them or if you want like a mix of both. And I'm so excited to start filming in the new shed. Bye. And don't forget to get your stickers at CommonwealthBigger. Com. Hey, no sales in here. Just a couple of quick thank yous. One for this awesome postcard from Gary at the Postcard Shack. Thank you, Gary. I do appreciate it. I like that. A Merry Halloween. Really cool. Looks like pepper. And then a thank you also to Joe and Laura. eBay store, the big door prize. I really like that. I got a sticker right there. We'll find a place for this one for sure. We might keep it and put them in the new supply hut. So they say they're big fans of the show and of Trash to Cash podcast, which... You know, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, it looks like Pepper finally got in here today. I was filming so early, she didn't uh, make an appearance. At any rate, a hey, couple of things. One is the giveaway. So you're going to be seeing another sponsored video over on Commonwealth Picker. And we're going to do a giveaway this time. Let me know what you would rather have. So as the giveaway for this one. I have a GoPro 7 that I don't use anymore. I was thinking about giving away my GoPro 7 instead of selling it. Might be somebody out there who wants it. And my Rolo, since I got this Rolo, I have the old Rolo here, still working great. I thought about giving one of those away. Tell me in the comments which one you would prefer to have. Or, per, well, I don't know about prefer to have, but for, prefer me to give away. Let's say that. And of course, don't forget, I'll always announce it on the video, and you can always contact me, commonwealthpicker at gmail.com. I'm not going to leave comments. There's a lot of spammers out there, a lot of... Uh, well, scammers, I guess. Not spammers, but scammers out there in the comments section replying to people's comments lately over on both channels, actually. Commonwealth Picker and Commonwealth Flipper. Pepper's driving me nuts here. Thank you all for using all the links below. You guys are amazing. Thank you to American Bubble Boy for the, for the bubble bucks for folks heading into Q4. We'll talk about Q4 goals as well. Thank you to everybody buying the Supply Hut stuff using code COMMONWEALTH to get 10% off all the way up through the 10th, the 10th of this month. So thank you all very much, and I can't wait to see you next time. People ask me all the time about this, so I figured I'd show you. There you go. If you remember, if you go way back, the original idea was to have the bubble wrap go through here and come out here so we could use it really easily. And so behind here, there's actually a place where we can do that. But I liked the aesthetic a little bit more of not having the bubble wrap hang out. Plus, it would get caught up every now and again. And it's just as easy to come back here and use it as it is right here.